Frank Demora here. This is going to be part two for my post today for a YouTube channel that I'm making. I'm going to bring it over to my website. So let me get right into it. As you can see, I already put up a video on the uh, information about the coming Psalm War, the peace and safety, and what was going on in Israel today. But now I'm going to go into another prophecy, and this prophecy uh, deals with the revived Roman Empire. Now we know that from the second chapter and the seventh chapter of the book of Daniel, this is where the Lord shows us in the last days who the last kingdom would be at the time that Jesus Christ came back. And obviously if you read both of those chapters and including the uh, Revelation, you would find out that the Roman Empire is going to be relived, revived again, and it already has been. The western leg of the old Roman Empire is already here through, and it's called the European Union. And of course, all of this information is in my book, detailed information about what's going on. So we know that when this revived Roman ember, Empire shows up again, and keep in mind that when Jesus here was here the first time, he confronted uh, was confronted with the Roman Empire and when he comes back it will be the same thing again now when Caesar Nero uh, was in office if you will um, we know that there's going to be another one like Caesar Nero the leader of this revived Roman Empire and of course we know also from the revelation that this man who comes He's going to control the entire economy, the banking systems around the world. And we know this by Revelation 13, verses 16 through 17, where he warns us that this Antichrist man is going to force everybody to take his mark, which will be placed on their forehead or in their hand, as you can see right here in the scripture in Revelation chapter 13. But notice also, for sure, we know that he's going to control the economy because it says this, And no man might buy or sell, say he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of the name. So if you don't receive this mark of the Antichrist who rules this revived Roman Empire, which will be ruling the world, then you're not going to be uh, able to buy anything. And obviously that means food and, and supplies that you're going to need to live. So. <clears throat> when you read the scriptures, everything comes together. We know it's what to look for. We see it coming, and I want to give you some examples. Now, Harold Salenti, this is a picture of Harold Salenti, and if the video doesn't work when you get to my site, just click this link right here, and you'll be able to get the link. But I started this off, you'll see it at the... Uh, right here at the eight minute mark because he's talking about what's going on in Europe. Now Europe, as you're going to see, I'm going to play this for you. I'll go down to his video which I loaded for you and it will be at about this same time period. And He's going to be talking about the central bank that was just installed in the European Union. In other words, all of the banks now are going to come under an umbrella of the U European Union leadership. They'll be able to control all of the banks. So we see that this one world system is just solidifying together. Let's listen to what Harold Salenti says. Now keep in mind, Harold Salenti has been right 99% of the time that he's told people uh, what is going to happen with the economy in the future. He is one of the top trendsetters in the economy in the world. And uh, so let's listen to what he has to say. Story, ah, doesn't make much difference. They just did a deal yesterday, today, in, in, uh, in Europe, in Brussels. It's happened. The banking systems have merged. They have now taken control, sovereign control, over all of the banks throughout Europe and have now put it under the one bank in Brussels. Now it's a new central bank. There is a new world order. No, it's not the Illuminati. You don't have to go find it someplace hiding. It's in front of everybody's eyes, Alex. The new world order is the banking order. It's an old world order. They kind of try to cover it up, and they're covering it up again. The 
This is not news that's making the news. And as you said, it's, it's in the paper, but in the back of it, it's like, oh, yeah, and now the country's all sovereignty will be given to the private bank. And that's the way it is. And you're going to take your taxes and pay it to foreign bankers and tell you how lazy you are. How's that sound? And, and they call it a world government and brag they've conquered us and the Rothschilds and Rockefellers, as you know. So I'm going to stop right there. I'll give you, uh, you can go back and watch that video, the length of the video. It's a very interesting video. And uh, but, so I'm going to give you now a little bit of the information that we're seeing uh, that came out of the news. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. For example, uh, let me go right to this article, and you'll see it here. One of the news items that came out, and there'll be a video that you'll be able to access when you uh, go to this site. But uh, for now, let me just uh, get this out of the way. Give us some more room. Sorry about that. It says German Chancellor Angela Merkel said on Friday that the single supervisory body, body of the European banking sector will be created over the next year, adding that it must be in place before the Eurozone uh, rescue funds would be made available, uh, recapitalize the troubled banks. Now, we give our finance ministers ambitious tasks to establish an illegal framework for supervision by January the 1st, 2013. And, of course, we're already in October, so you can see how fast that's coming. This banking uh, supervision will then be built up in the course of 2013, and she told a news conference on Thursday, uh, after the EU leaders reached a deal on a timetable for launching the initiative. Now, the European Council President Herman Van Rompuy said that the 27 EU leaders agreed to the plan, which will give the European Central Bank overall responsibilities for supervising the banking sector after 10 hours of task in Brussels. So, this is exactly what. Uh, we see Harold Salenti uh, was talking about. So it is definitely here. They made the first huge step in bringing about the one world currency or the whatever, you know, the one world system, if you will, that is going to uh, fall eventually in the hands of the Antichrist. Now let me get some more news for you. Let me go into, um, excuse me. Here's another one, and it gives you a little bit of an explanation. It says, Brussels, a new draft of a law that would put the European Central Bank in charge of policy banks. Get rid of this. This is one thing bad about having these pop-ups show up all over the place. Okay, we'll just move it out of the way. Uh, make it more attractive to non-Euro states to join the supervisory regime. Uh, by giving them greater say in decision making. A document seen in Wall Street Journal uh, Tuesday set out a new decision making procedure that makes it more cumbersome for the ECB governing council to change supervisory decisions. Non Euro states, even if they submit in the new supervision, can't vote on the ECB's governing council. The lack of voting power has prompted several of the non-euro states to threaten to block the new supervisor regime. Now putting the ECB in charge of the policy leaders in the Eurozone is part of the broader deal that aims to prevent expensive banking crisis or uh, excuse me expensive banking crisis from uh, pushing entire countries into the financial ruin as happened in Ireland and in risks uh, being repeated in, in Spain because Spain is having a huge problem right now and when you watch the video you also see that they're trying to rush these things out. So, But the legal framework of the central bank places any final decisions in the hands of the ECB governing body forcing the EU officials to scramble for the legal workaround. So there's definitely uh, signs that the Antichrist system is being forged and it is coming out of the European Union or the revived Roman Empire. And by now, everybody should 
uh, see what what is going on. I mean, to be to be able to recognize what is going on. Now, here is a, the last article that I want to uh, share with you, and it talks about the French president says the deal to start building the banking union on the first of January will enable the eurozones to speed up economic integration in other words take over they're going to tell you what's going on with the banking systems and thanks to this can it, uh, advance more quickly and with more assurance this is what they were saying in Brussels as Carol Salenti was alluding to it says he is speaking to the EU leaders agreed to set a single banking supervisor for the 17 uh, nas or nation eurozone to keep keep steps towards the a banking union and of course the antichrist is going to end up controlling this but with this let's uh let's go into and see what he says in the video union with a banking supervisor for those countries in the eurozone is going to happen the question is precisely when they say there will be a legal agreement in place by the beginning of 2013 but when this banking union will be fully operational sometime during next year. Why does it matter? Well, it matters, of course, because banks have been at the very heart of the Eurozone crisis. The timing also matters because crucial to helping troubled banks in countries like Spain is that they can access the main bailout fund and have funds injected directly into their ailing banks rather than going by government. And if they go by government, they only increase the debts of those uh, governments. There was quite a lot of dispute about this, partly over the timing. The French were eager for it to happen uh, immediately or as soon as possible, but the Germans said uh, that they needed uh, some months, some time. They wanted to make sure that this uh, really worked. If there were winners here, I think it was the Germans uh, who came out on top and that this thing uh, will take some time with, I'm sure, further wrangling uh, before it's fully implemented. All right, so there you have it. We know for sure that the system is being set up. We know it, we see it coming. The Lord spoke about it. Jesus Christ warned about it in the book of Revelation. We saw it in the Old Testament and Jesus mentions uh, a lot of information, if you will, about this Antichrist. And for example, him going into the temple that's gonna be rebuilt abomination of desolation is going to be taking place and then again in the book of Revelation chapter 17 we see again Jesus talk about the harlot that will be sitting on top of the beast and of course we do know uh, that would be the revived Roman Empire of the last days so I know that a lot of this information for maybe somebody that's new to prophecy may not understand what's going on in Europe and how it pertains to Bible prophecy but believe me According to the scriptures, the revived Roman Empire is already here. And the, what's going on in the rest of the nations and how the economies are tanking the United States with their $16 trillion debt moving even closer uh, every single day. That debt clock is ticking off and it's getting higher and higher. The problems in the European Union, uh, you know, with possible crashes. This is why they're making these emergency uh, mergers with the banking system and all that they're doing is coming to coming on the same road that Jesus said that uh, the outcome would lead to one man controlling everything. So as soon as the economy crashes, uh, you know that a new system is going to come out. It's being forged now. And eventually, and the bottom line is this, when it's all said and done, Antichrist will move in and he is going to do exactly what Jesus Christ said here. He's going to force everybody to take his mark. And uh, so we see the road is being paved. So what does this tell us? You need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ today so that you're freed from what's going to come on this planet. And you don't want to be anywhere near when it takes place. So today would be that day to escape the fiery hell that Jesus talked more about in the scriptures than anybody else in the entire Bible. And for those people who don't believe that this is the truth, they are going to have a huge surprise when they stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and they find out that they missed the mark. 
believing the Messiah of the world and they're cast into the lake of fire that the Antichrist and eventually uh, Satan will be cast into so take heed don't heed what I'm telling you I'm asking you to heed what Jesus Christ is telling you what the Holy Spirit is showing you and all the proof that I'm posting leads to the words the fulfillment of Jesus Christ thank you